Hello, welcome back. My name is Keith Thompson and I'm with the Armadale Church of Christ. We're continuing our study of the heroes of the faith and today's hero is a man by the name of John Mark. Now you may know him better as Mark, the writer of the Gospel of Mark. But we get a picture of him from the very early days of the church and we get to see him growing up in the faith. Now Mark refers probably to himself when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's been teaching his disciples and now he's arrested by the mob. Notice this, this hint of this man in Mark 14 verses 51 and 52. A young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen sheet over his naked body and they seized him. But he pulled free of the linen sheet and escaped naked. The fact that he doesn't mention himself by name is not unusual. Many of the gospel writers do that. John did that and uh, Mark, uh, sorry, Matthew did that. But anyway, the first time we read of him for sure is in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 12, uh, where the apostle Peter comes to his house. Now Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 13, calls him his son, which probably tells us that it was Peter who converted uh, Mark. Notice, uh, Peter has been arrested uh, by Herod who wanted to put him to death. Uh, an angel of the Lord freed him and then he went to a house of a prominent Christian in Jerusalem. So we pick it up in Acts 12 and verse 12. And when he realized this, he went, that's Peter, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark. And there were many who were gathered together and were praying. Now, so we can see that he was raised in a Christian household. Now, in the very same chapter, we read of where the apostle uh, Paul and Barnabas take him back to their headquarters in Antioch. Notice in verse 25, Acts 12, 25, and Barnabas and Saul returned from, re, returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their mission, taking along with them John, who was also called Mark. Now, John Mark, or Mark, uh, obviously did a great job as he studied with these great men of the faith because he was selected to go with them on the first missionary journey. Notice chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. So being sent by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they had reached Salmis, they began to proclaim the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they also, they also had John as their helper. <laughs> so we can see uh, John developing in his work uh, in the gospel. He's helping these two great missionaries. Unfortunately, things didn't work out too well. Just a few verses later, we see that poor old John gets in trouble there. Notice verse 13. So Acts 13 and verse 13. Paul and his companions put out to sea from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia, but John left them and returned to Jerusalem. For one reason or another, John was not able to take the rigors of this missionary journey. But when it came time for the second missionary journey, Barnabas, who was his cousin, Barnabas the son of encouragement, wanted to take along John once again. Notice what we read in Acts 15 uh, in verses 36 to 40. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brethren in every city in which we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. And Barnabas wanted to take John, called Mark, along with them also. But Paul kept insisting that they should not take along him who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there occurred such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another. And Barnabas took Mark along with him and sailed to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left, being committed by the brethren by the grace of the Lord. 
and he was travel and as he was traveling through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So John Mark, Mark caused a division amongst Barnabas and Paul. Barnabas took him and went back to Cyprus. Well, the book of Acts then remains silent about what happened to Mark. But we get more about him because at the end of the book of Acts, Paul is in prison in Rome. And while he's in prison, he writes a number of letters called the prison epistles when grouped together. And I want you to notice at the end of Colossians, Colossians chapter 4 and verse 10. It says there, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, sends you his greetings, and also Barnabas' cousin Mark, about whom you received instruction. If he comes to you, welcome him. Can you see what's happened here? Now, Mark has grown up in the faith. His travels with Barnabas made him a lot stronger. He matured, and now he is with Paul in the imprisonment in uh, uh, in Rome. He's not a prisoner himself and Paul is sending them out to continue on in the work. Also, notice what we read in the book of Philemon uh, there, uh, in, in the greetings there. Uh, Philemon 23 and 24. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow workers. So here we clearly see that Mark is a fellow worker of the Apostle Paul. We now go on to uh, 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 Second Timothy. And this is the last book that Timothy wrote. And we get to see a wonderful, wonderful picture of how he regards our hero, Mark. Notice... Uh, as the old apostle is facing his death, notice these tender words that he writes. At, at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 11. Only Luke is with me. Pick up Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for service. You see, Mark is a very human Christian. He had his failings. He had his weaknesses. But in the end, he showed his faith by overcoming those weaknesses, overcoming the, the problems that he had to become a fellow worker of the Apostle Paul. And one whom at the end of his life, Paul says, bring Mark to me, for he is useful, useful for service. What a great example he is. And of course, we're so thankful that through the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit this man gives us the, the wonderful gospel of Mark and tells us so much about our Lord and Savior. Well, our time's up. I thank you for being with us once again. We look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye for now.